In this tutorial, we are going to add platforms to our jumping side-scrolling game. First of all, we need to make the zombies part of a side-scrolling uh, game by preventing them from wandering around the screen with a drunken walk and just moving from right to left across the screen. This is the code that we had uh, previously in uh, the first part of this tutorial. And if we press run, we should see that we have a cop who fell down there out of the sky. Uh, we've got random zombies jiggling about. And I am able to move left to right here. And when I press the space bar, uh, I have a jump process. So the first thing we need to do is to stop the zombies wandering around all over the screen and just have them at the bottom of the screen. Let's have a look at the code that we would like to use for that. The first thing is where we spawn the zombies should now be on the ground. So we're going to make some changes to the position of each zombie. Instead of a random X and Y, we're going to have a random X but uh, fixed to the ground with this code here. Then we need to stop them from uh, randomly moving in the Y direction. So we're going to comment out the monster one movement. Uh, we could remove the code that prevents them going off that side of the screen, but since I'll never move in that direction, it shouldn't actually be necessary. So let's have a look at what that does to our code then. First of all, we're going to find this uh, generation code here. So this is where we create our NPCs. And we're going to take them with a Y coordinate of max height and then we need to, that max height would be the very bottom of the screen, so we need to take away their size, so that's enemy size. And that would place them right at the bottom of the screen. So we also have to take away the ground height. And we need to remember to close that square bracket there so that it makes the set of coordinates. If we try that out, you can see that all the zombies started at the bottom of the screen, although they are still jiggling around. So let's go and fix their movement code now. So we scroll down into the game logic section. So notice the comment here helps us to find that. And we're looking for monsters and NPC list. And we can simply comment out the code that moves them up and down the screen. So the monster one code is their Y coordinate. And the other thing is we don't want them moving left to right. So we're actually going to uh, take away between 0 and 5 instead of minus 5 to 5. And now you can see that they are indeed moving across in a right to left fashion and when they get to the edge of the screen they then pop over to the other side in a respawning action. Okay, so we now have a cop who can jump over zombies. We have uh, the zombies staggering along in one particular direction. So the next thing that we should do then is prevent ourselves from jumping twice. A double jump is uh, a well-known game flaw. Uh, so we can only allow ourselves to jump if we are actually on the ground. So we're going to introduce a touching ground variable, which we'll set to false. And that will allow us to fall out of the sky to start with. And then if we ever land on the ground, then we're going to say touching ground equals true. And we'll only allow a jump to happen if we're pressing the space bar and we are touching the ground. So let's have a look at, let's have a look at the problem first of all. So if I press jump and jump again, I can kind of float around in this, the, the sky there, uh, and this isn't obviously very realistic. So, before our main game loop, we're going to add in a 
touching ground equals false. And then here, we're only going to allow the space bar to make a jump if uh, key bar space and touching ground is true. So we can only jump when we're on the ground. And then the other thing that we need to say is that if y goes bigger than max height minus size minus ground height, then we set ourselves to there. We stop our y speed. And we also say touching ground equals true. So now that should prevent us from doing a double jump. And if I click in here, I get a bit of movement and then press the space bar and nothing's happening. So we have some problem with our game logic. So the problem is that when we jumped, so we checked whether we were allowed to jump here, but of course, when we start jumping, we're no longer touching the ground. And actually, we've spelled ground wrong. Have I done that each time? Yes, I have. Okay, so touching ground is false. Touching ground is true is what we're checking for. Touching ground is true there. Yeah, so when we actually jump, we're no longer touching the ground. So we have to not only defy gravity with our y speed, but also touching ground equals false. And it's very easy to make spelling mistakes like I just did there. So be careful because uh, touching ground and touching ground are not the same thing. And that was causing our problem. So if I click in here now, get a little bit of speed, and I can press the space bar, but I can't double space. I can only do a single jump at a time. Okay, so we've prevented multiple jumps. We now need to add some platforms to jump onto. Now your platforms, you should probably plan out on a little bit of a map. So I've arranged for just uh, three platforms here, uh, X and Y coordinates, and then a width and a height. So notice 20 pixels high, not very tall, but quite wide. Uh, 600, 300, bit shorter, same height. 300, 450, bit longer, same height. So I'm going to put in a few platforms. They might need a bit of tweaking for the smaller screen that we're working on. So we're going to go here and put in a platform list. Now this goes up at the top before our main game loop. It probably makes sense to put it next to the NPCs here. So platform list equals. And then we put some square brackets to contain our list. And then each individual platform uh, we're going to make it a, a tuple, which is a, an unchangeable bit of code here. So we put it in round brackets. And uh, we went for uh, 100, 300 with a size of 320. And then I'll just try one more just now. So I'm going to go for uh, maybe 250, 100. Need to put these inside round brackets. 250 comma 100. Uh, size of maybe just uh, 100. And again a height of 20. So that's my platform list. Now what I would need to do. Now that I've got these platforms. Is I need to draw them. So I'm going to go down to the draw section. And I'm going to feed it. Uh, and a draw rectangle with all four coordinates being part of the loop for drawing. So 
So I'm scrolling down, finding my drawing section, which is here. Uh, it makes sense after you draw the ground to draw all the platforms. So I'm going to say for platform in platform list. And I'm just going to say draw, or rather pi game dot draw dot rect. And it wants to have a position. Where is it going to draw this? It's going to draw them on the screen. What colors are it going to draw them? It's going to draw them in red. And then I'm going to make a set of four coordinates. And that's just going to be platform zero, comma, platform one, comma, platform two, comma, platform three. And we can see, or rather we can't see, because uh, this is in the way. Let's see. So we can see we've got one platform here. Where's the other one? It might be off the screen. So we're going to have to think about where our coordinates are. So the first coordinate is x, the next is y, the next is the width, and the next is the height. So let's have a look at what we put in here. And we've got 100 across and 300 down. So there's the problem there. Our actual screen height is 300, so we're drawing a bit of a platform that's off of the screen. So if I maybe change this down to... Uh, 100 100 so that it's going to stay on the screen there and we should hopefully be able to see two different platforms now when the game is running and I've broken the brackets there and of course the problem now is that the two platforms are running into each other so I need to just again tweak that uh, instead of 100 here, let's go for 150 there. And that's one of the reasons why it's really quite important to plan out where you put your platforms, because uh, you need to build a, a level that's challenging uh, to allow you to jump between them. So, for example, here there's not enough space between. Uh, that'd be very awkward to fit in there. So a little bit more tweaking is going to be necessary. I'm going to go for uh, 50 and 100 here, and then maybe only uh, 200 wide. And that looks like something that's going to be a bit more useful, perhaps too wide now. So maybe only 150 wide. And there we have some platforms that it would probably be useful to jump between. At the moment, of course, there's no code to stop me falling through the platform. And so that is the next phase that we have to add in to our game. So we'll do that in the next section of the tutorial.